striking out of Fort Stockton and headed out across Texas. Kelly and I headed straight for the capital itself. The Great Austin, Texas. Wait. We didn't go to Austin. Back that train up. And let's start again. San Antonio, Texas, a city with the seventh highest population in America, is a city with a deep, rich history. Best known for the ever-popular sites such as the Alamo and the San Antonio Riverwalk area. But to understand this city and the multicultural versatility, which reaches far beyond the Hispanic and American cultures, one has to go back as far as 1691 and beyond. The first inhabitants of the area then known as Yanaguana were the Payaya Indians. The Payaya people inhabited the territory of present-day San Antonio and were the earliest recorded residents. They inhabited the area of the San Antonio River, the Frio River to the west, and Milam County to the east where they lived among the Tunkawa. Their main village was next to the river that the Spanish named the San Antonio. The Payaya first made contact with the Spanish colonists in the 17th century, when the tribe had about 10 different encampments. The Spanish and the Payaya became trading partners and even began to socialize their people. By the year 1706, the Spanish had converted a small band of Payaya into Catholicism and they were baptized at the Mission San Francisco Solano, five miles from the Rio Grande in Mexico, which is today's municipality of Guerrero. And this band totaled about 60 families by 1709. In 1716, the Payaya befriended Franciscan priest Antonio de Oliveras, they became the Mission Indians at San Antonio de Valero Mission, better known as the Alamo. The mission began assimilation of the Payaya by teaching them Spanish and trade skills. The tribe had an elected self-government within the mission, but infectious diseases took a high toll on the Mission Payaya during the 18th century. It was proposed in 1719 that 400 families be transported from the Canary Islands and Havana to populate the region in an attempt to solidify the area as the most important mission area of control. But during this time, things moved much slower than they do today. By March of 1731, a group of 15 families totaling 56 persons had made the trip to San Antonio, and the Spanish halted the rest where they were. The 15 families joined the military community and formed the nucleus of the Villa of San Fernando de Bajar. This became the first regularly formed civil government in Texas. This gave the area a mixed community of Payaya Indians, Spanish, and Canary Islanders. 
San Antonio grew to be the largest Spanish settlement in Texas and was designated the Spanish capital of, and later, the Mexican capital of the province of Texas. From then until 1824, Mexico allowed American settlers from the United States into the area. They mostly occupied land in the eastern part. When Antonio Lopez de Santa Anna unilaterally abolished the Mexican Constitution in 1824, violence ensued. In a series of battles, the forces led by Ben Milam forced the Mexicans out of the area, dominated by the Americans east of San Antonio and they later captured San Antonio from the forces of General Martin Perfecto de Caz, Santa Ana's brother-in-law. In the spring of 1836, Santa Ana marched on San Antonio. An all-volunteer force under the command of James Neal occupied and fortified the deserted Alamo mission. Upon Neal's departure, the joint command of William Travis and James Bowie were left in charge of the mission. The Battle of the Alamo took place between February 23rd and March 6th of 1836. All defenders of the Alamo perished, and the rallying cry, Remember the Alamo, was born. Over the years since the Battle of the Alamo, San Antonio has grown to be the seventh largest populated area in the nation and is populated by a wide variety of ancestries, such as Spanish, Mexican, Anglo, African American, Asian, Native American, and many more cultures. This can be seen in the dialects and architecture of the city. Even the Germans are present and develop their own language called Tejas Deutsch, which is German with a Texas twang. It's still spoken in certain areas of town today. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell so that you'll be notified whenever we do an upload. And always remember, every trip starts with a step. And that step, well, it starts with you.